let's focus on breakout and open competition as we get ready for our nonstop training camp coverage in Oxnard. Yeah, so the first ones that I look at for breakout candidates, I'm trying, and these this doesn't mean that these guys are all going to hit. It just means these are the potential guys. Like when you see a J. Ron Curse blow up last year, or you know when Byron Jones all of a sudden it's like, wow, it clicked. I mean, that was obviously a position change, but it clicked for him, and it's like, wow, this is is you know Dalton Schultz. Yeah, Schultz, exactly, perfect example. 2020 Schultz, even Jarwin to an extent uh, when he got paid. So. Uh, I look at who's at least got the chance to do it because I think they're going to need more than one J. Ron Curse breakout guy in order for them to be really successful this season. And so when I look around at the roster, I saw three names that really stood out to me. Okay. And the first one, again, as a candidate, is James Washington. And we haven't gotten a chance to see James Washington yet because he's been walking around in a boot um, and he hasn't had an opportunity to really work with the offense or anything like that. But this is a guy who was a second round pick in 2018 was a guy that the Cowboys liked a lot. They brought him in here for a visit. He was, that was the year they took Michael Gallup. He was one of the receivers that they were looking at as potential second or third round guy. Hmm. Um, and so James Washington is somebody who made his name at Oklahoma state as the guy who runs routes seven through nine on the route tree. And so for those mean? of you who don't know what the route tree is, there are nine standard routes that everybody runs and, and they're numbered in the route tree is one, two, three, four, five. So seven through nine are seven is the post eight is the go or eight is the corner. Nine is the go route. And so all this stuff down the field, stuff breaking towards the middle of the field, deep breaking towards the sideline or going deep. What we think of a gallop. Yeah, honestly. that And that's the thing is that with gallop out, likely the first couple games of the season, then somebody's going to need to fill that role. And I think there's a good chance that with Tolbert and Washington both on the field, Tolbert is going to fill or Washington's going to fill the role of let's push things deep down the field with Washington because that's where he was, you know, got his whole, uh, you know, got teams excited about him. Yeah. Yeah. When he was coming out. And so he started off really well. His second year in Pittsburgh, he had 44 catches, 735 yards, was almost 17 yards a catch. And you saw that. I think these last couple of years where things have been not great for him, uh, you know, it's been he's playing underneath routes. The offense changed with Ben Roethlisberger being what he was and then playing with Mason Rudolph and, uh, you know, just that offense sputtering like it did. Yeah. Um, and he's somebody who last year he had 44 targets, 24 receptions. So that's 54 percent catch percentage. And people look at that and they go like, well, that's not great. He's getting short passes and yet he's still only catching half of them. Uh, Sports Info Solutions tracked all of his targets um, and said that they had, of his 44 targets, they said 28 were catchable targets. And so this is a big chunk of passes that were not catchable. So his adjusted catch percentage based off of catchable targets was 85% last year. And I think that James Washington is going to be a really interesting case study this year for everybody who always wants to know, does Dak make receivers better? Because typically they just draft their own. I mean, I know everybody says Amari Cooper got Dak paid and things like that. But if you want to look genuinely, there are a lot of people who would say Derek Carr is better than Dak right now. Dak did improve Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper played better here than he played with Derek Carr. And so I think that this will be a good chance for people to say, all right, let's see if he elevates the game of James Washington. So that's a guy who I think. Didn't he just do it for Cedric Wilson? But Cedric Wilson never played with anybody else. So people can argue, well, that's just his skill set. And and that's why I think it's difficult is because you can't really compare it. Even Randall Cobb, who played well here, he played with Aaron Rodgers previously. It wasn't like he did anything more special here than anywhere else. So this will be one of the first real tests, I think, that we can point to and say, does Dak make this guy better? And I think James Washington has a chance to break out. There will be a competition for the third receiver into the regular season. So Tolbert and Washington will get those reps early on, and then whoever plays better is likely to take over whenever Gallup comes back. But... Great I think that that's down. a player that has a chance to break out. Great breakdown on that. Uh, this is Bobby Bell with his Cowboy breakout candidates. And the first one was James Washington. The next one, uh, the next two actually are on the defensive side of the ball. The next one for me is Malik Hooker. And Malik Hooker is mm. a guy who had a lot of success in college roaming center field, playing that role. He has, as Broadus has talked about before, he has some of the best ball skills we've ever studied in college players coming out. That guy was an incredible center fielder. And even when he got into the NFL, when he was the 15th overall pick in that Solomon Thomas draft, uh, Malik Hooker started out 
incredibly well with the Colts. He had uh, three interceptions in his first four games. He was all over the place for them, and then he got hurt midway through the season. And then ever since then, it's been a struggle. Got hurt every single year. Stuff to his knee, stuff to his you know leg. He had a shoulder injury. I remember nothing from him last year. Well, he, and that's the thing. He had an Achilles injury in 2020 that killed his season. And typically, you see a jump from guys the second season removed from an Achilles. The first season back is always, I mean, consistently, you can go almost in any sport. Yeah. The second season, you see them improve. It, it takes a while. You, you're back playing, but you're not really yourself again until year two. And so last year, he came in here, and I think you saw that progressively getting better. And he was given more snaps as the year went on. And it was, you know, okay, yeah, let's give him a little more. Let's give him a little more. We can trust him with this. And and he's going to make plays for us. And when we saw him out at training camp, he had he was making a lot of plays on the ball. He, he was, you know, reading things, whether it's a tip ball in the air that he just happens to get under or making a play on the ball or whatever else. He has all those skills that naturally lead to turnovers. And even though I think J. Ron Curse has been better and they've gotten some better play at safety, they have not found that roaming center field no. ball hawk guy. Is he going to start? I think so. I think he's going to start. It's going to be a little weird. They're going to have three safeties on the field a lot because Donovan Wilson will function as the strong safety. Malik Hooker is the free safety. And J. Ron Curse, even though he's a safety, is going to play up in the box as a linebacker, essentially, filling a pseudo role similar to what Cam Chancellor did for Dan Quinn for years in Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's a guy who, especially coming off that injury, he last year, year five for him, played in more games than he ever had in his career with Dallas. He had never been able to wow. stay that healthy in Indianapolis. So health has always been his issue. A lot of teams across the league were interested in him. That's why Dallas ended out, you know, Dallas typically gives their one-year extensions to guys, and that's it. The fact that they went two years on Malik Hooker, that can be an indicator for you guys that he did have a market because there were other teams that were interested and, and wanted mm. to bring him here and there was some security in giving him that two-year deal. So I think Malik Hooker is a guy who he has all the attributes to be a really good center fielder for them. And he's still, I mean, he's 26 this year. Yeah. Still young and, you know, had an interception last year, played a lot better in the second half of the season. I think he's going to get a chance to start and contribute in a big way. And then the other guy for you, and this is, this is one I think Brian's disagreeing with me on a little bit. Because he thinks there's going to be some competition here. And that's it. Three technique defensive tackle. And my guy is uh, Oso Odigizua. And I think that Odigizua, who was really great the first half of the season. Yeah. I think what you saw from him in large part was the rookie wall that everybody talks about. He played at UCLA. I mean, it's 10, 12 games and then you're done. And so going 17 games and then going into the playoffs... It's a lot to ask for. And he went from being the guy uh, that was playing 65, 70% of the snaps at three technique that after uh, week 10, which is right around the time that he would have been done playing for UCLA, after week 10, the Cowboys played him less than 50% of the time. And I think that they knew where he was. But you watched early on the way he was playing for them. He was very disruptive, always in the backfield. Even when he wasn't getting sacks, he was pressuring the quarterback. You look at Games two, three, and four last year for him. Two quarterback hits against the Chargers, two against the Eagles, three against the Panthers. He was causing a lot of problems for defense, and they were having to count for him. I've told this on the air before. I had a guy, a friend who plays for another team. He plays defensive line for another team, and they were getting ready to play Dallas, and so he was just kind of studying some film of Dallas, and he texted me, and he said, who in the world is 97 for the Cowboys? <laughs> And I was like, it's Oso Diggy Zoo. It's their rookie defensive tackle. And he goes, that guy is a badass. That guy is so good. You guys got a player there. Wow. And so guys around the league noticed Oso Diggy Zua. He looks in incredible shape when we saw him out at camp. He is just ripped for a defensive tackle. Now, the only thing is Chauncey Golston, who was their other third round pick at defensive line, he had been playing defensive end. They've had him put on weight and he's moving inside. And Bobby, so Brian thinks that there's going to be competition there. Where are we with Tristan Hill? He is on the bubble heading into camp. He very well could be cut. Second round pick. Totally second, forgotten. Second round pick in 2019. Uh, a guy that even though the safeties were there for him, they didn't think there was any chance these safeties were going to fall to him. Juan Thornhill, Taylor Rapp, these guys, they did. And they were sitting there staring him in the face. And they went ahead and went with Tristan Hill because that's who Rod Marinelli wanted. Rod Marinelli, who I believe is still around Dallas and listens to the station a little bit, uh... So if you're out there, hello, Rod. Shout out, uh, Coach. But hey, We'll give you a history quiz next time we see a pop quiz. Rod, who had pounded the table for him, along with Chris Richard. Chris Richard was in favor of two. Rod had 
given up on Tristan Hill before the end of his rookie year. Had said, this guy, I can't. I can't get it out of him. What? So it's it's motivation he, it's, internal? It's immaturity. It's uh, work habits. It's, you know, he's been banged up a lot. It's It's all the issues that you heard about him coming out of school have to this point come to fruition. And I think that, you know, he thought a new staff would be a fresh start for him. Well, this is three defensive coordinators now who have been a little frustrated with him. And, you know, you saw the immaturity was still going on at the end of the Raiders game last year when he got in that fight after the game was over. And so this will be a big year for him. He's had some, we saw him have some decent practices during the summer, but man, if he doesn't, really click. I think he's a likely cut candidate for them.